In unlikely settings across the world, from the grey houses of sleepy suburbia to rural towns and modern cities, there's an amazing energy at work. People are creating, sharing, learning in local communities. These communities are emerging, finding each other and forming a much larger informal network, united by a common organic idea that anything can be achieved by grassroots means. An idea that has come to be known under the all-encompassing acronym of DIY, Do It Yourself. One of these suburban settings is the Hideaway House in Dean's Grange, about 20 minutes from Dublin city centre. It's also my home. Since 2006, it's been a focal point for our community and what we are doing ourselves. The way you use the word DIY is how I would use the word punk. It means the same thing, essentially. In fact, DIY, independent, punk, grunge, or, you know, I can't even use that term seriously, but um, it's just the current name, or it's a name for what is always, has always been and always will be, which is the underground. It's the way that you do things if you want to get things done because once you realize that no one else is actually going to like make things happen for you and that if you want to like make changes that you have to kind of basically do it yourself. People out there in the world have things that they want to communicate, media, and we're in a period where now people make their own media. They don't wait and find a professional to do it for them. For us, anyway, all our friends were just going to discos and like going out and drinking all the time. And DIY community, like the gigs were something that we could go to where it was just an alternative. It is an area in which people, largely young people, can figure out who they are and what they're doing. At first we thought that the gigs that we went to, that's all that the DIY community was. I didn't have a clue that like there were people all over the world doing this something alternative and like just kind of working together at different communities everywhere like um but then when once touring bands started coming and stuff like that you realize whoa this is much bigger That's the thing about music, it's like, it invites you in. And then if you decide to follow the thread, you learn there's like this incredible 
world out there. It's not just what has been presented to you on your street, in your house, in your school. When we started organising gigs for bands from other countries, we connected with an important network that would then enable our bands to go to those places. What's going on? Yeah. We're riding on the pier. We're gonna go busking to get money for petrol, for parking. Money can't be ignored in the society we live in, but it doesn't need to be a motivation. DIY sets the priority straight. Make things, meet people, build community, and be creative. Everything we did was DIY from when we were quite young, before we played music. The other things that we did, we always did ourselves, so it seemed a bit natural. The X are an experimental punk band from Amsterdam, who since their first gig in 1979, have relentlessly pushed the boundaries of music and genre. Their most recent album is a collaboration with a 70-year-old Ethiopian saxophone player. When, when we start doing this, I really realised that I would never ever make any money in my life. So I really had to be able to do everything myself. You never told me that. <laughs> I think there's a huge movement, yes, to create alternative systems so that people could make more and more on, the, on their own. And I think DIY has a big role in that. Because it used to be that you had no choice but to be a consumer, that people were the audience. We went and listened to music. And, but now it's not enough to be in the audience. No one just wants to be in the audience. People want to be making, they want to be heard. You don't have to rely on other big, like, businesses and corporations to do what you want to create to create music you get yeah. and show your music to other people you can work, do it on your own with help with, from your friends and stuff like that yeah. lying, 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 lying. the whole point of DIY is giving the tools to the people that have something to say <laughs> really revolutionized things in the last five or six years is that not only do we have the tools for making these things but we also have the tools for getting them out there into the world and what's happening now is that young artists are selling directly to the audience that's interested in them and making those connections directly instead of through the gatekeepers through the big corporate system by subverting the mainstream markets and systems, DIY is often seen as being anti-capitalist, anti-establishment. This may be true to a point, but it's more for doing things our way than against something else. If I thought anything, I thought, I just want to make a record. I just want to make a record, I'm going to make a record. And in terms of shows, like, I just want to play shows. Like, I wasn't trying to bring down the corporations. I was trying to create our own economy, our own world, our own industry. DIY to me is really about control. And so it's more than just utilitarian. It really is um, a way of thinking about the world where you get to control what's going to happen. It's not a kind of manifesto that DIY is the only way and 
that's it's it's the way that we've chosen because it's also good for us. You know that you've made the decisions that have resulted in the things that you do in your life. It broadened my mind anyway. Yeah, me too. To knowing what you're doing, knowing that like you're sure of what you're doing, or like you're comfortable with what you're doing. I think there's more engagement with um, maybe a more kind of sophisticated politics and you know less of a kind of two-dimensional kind of political scope to being like punk rock or being involved in the DIY scene or something. And that's very hopeful. Yeah, it's kind of quite inspiring to see so many people who are so young but have got like a really sophisticated analysis of, of like what's going on with the world and have a real passion for engaging with that and coming up with like creative ways to change it. Any community needs a focal point. When ours was first coming together a few years ago, we found a disused hall in Greystones, County Wicklow. We took over this building and gave it a new life, with all ages gigs, film showings and new projects. When this was closed to us, and subsequently turned into apartments, we had to take direct action, creating our own temporary social spaces in locations such as this derelict tea room on Kalini Beach in the suburbs of Dublin. I think social centres are really important. It's like, you know, you've got a city like Dublin that's like so commercial or you know, that you can actually like rip a little hole in that and give people a chance to breathe, you know, and just to live a bit differently where you just, everything isn't like a commercial transaction. Formed in 2004, Shomer Spree is a loose collective of people passionate about giving alternative communities a safe, free space in Dublin and providing a public forum for their ideas. This is a space where you can do stuff for free, where like, you know, there's stuff for kids, there's stuff for, like, anybody can walk in. Shumsbury is used by such a diverse range of groups, you know, from, like, kind of, like, arts groups to, you know, revolutionary anarchist groups. I'll tell you a story from Africa. First of all, thanks for coming out, a few of you who are here. Um, all the money that we raised today is going to start the bicycle co-op here at Shumsbury. It's a way of engaging or helping people to think. I just created some breathing space. In Ireland, we don't really have so much of that culture. You know, we have like pubs, and pubs are like a really big thing here. But like, it's really hard to move beyond that kind of pub culture. But actually, the city's kind of really changing, and there's so many people from Italy and from Poland, from Czech and from Spain, cultures where there are like non commercial um, social spaces. Each city has its own particular needs from a social space, and interpretations can vary across different cultures. Touring is one way of witnessing the colourful diversity of these spaces and the important roles they can play. Thanks, Thanks for coming in to watch us. In case you didn't hear, we're ghost mice. We're from Bloomington, Indiana and Gainesville, Florida now. I'm Chris, this is Hannah. We're happy to be here. It's our first day in your country and we're leaving tomorrow. But we'll be back later. <laughs> we must turn into monsters in the moonlight if we ever plan to fight against our In the summer of 2007, Ghost Mice visited the hideaway, the first date of an extensive European tour. I was to be their driver for this epic road trip, a 12,000 mile journey across 13 countries. It would take us to a vast range of the kind of social spaces Darren from Shomer Spree had mentioned. Places like Le Fouloir, a rural community in Nantes that hosts shows and visitors from all over France and beyond plus the odd American folk punk band, complete with Irish Driver. Over a thousand kilometers away in Genoa, Italy, Matteo showed me around a very important building in his city. This is Bur Laboratorio Burilda, that's a social laboratory. We've been using this space for the last four years. This used to be the School of Economics of Genoa. 
We have dark rooms for photographies, we have uh, space for uh, exhibitions, uh, music uh, spaces for bands to play, and then we have the, obviously the spaces where we do shows. We have um, something that's very important for the whole town. So we have like, a particular need for social space, so focus it on uh, having people meet uh, and uh, start projects together. DIY is also much more everywhere than you realize at first, when yeah. you think, ah, oh, yeah, squatting and punk and wah, that's DIY, but it's actually all over the place. Some people are doing it and they're not waving a flag doing it, they're just doing it. It, it just like naturally developed from all other things, I guess, you know, like starting the label and like playing bands, booking on tours and it just uh, like the kind of like progression of it. We were thinking about a vegan fast food place, like, you know, like because there's like nothing like this, like in Cologne and uh, uh, at the same time we want to continue doing records and eventually it just like developed to, into to connecting everything. People make kind of a middle ground between truly doing every component themselves and doing part of it themselves but hooking into systems out there like digital printing and online distribution and all kinds of things that, well, is that really DIY? It, it does depend on an establishment and a set of processes that you can hook into. If you really want to go off the grid yeah. and cut your ties to society and truly go underground, there's a lot less you can do. One aspect of the infrastructure that everyone must hook into if social spaces are to exist is the political one. Cities and governments take different views across Europe on the use of buildings as focal points for communities. It's neither a squat nor um, an official governance city building or something like this. Just wave and smile. We look for rooms to uh, live the way we want to live and to, to, to live culture. In our opinion, what we think culture is all about. And this was empty, the building, for nearly 20 years. We asked the city, do you have rooms for us? And they said, no, there are no rooms. Then we squatted it for one day to prove there's a room. Then it took us six years on court. And in 1999, we finally signed a contract. As a building belongs to the city, but we have the right to use it the way we want to for 30 years without paying anything. And after signing the contract, it took us another six and a half years to reconstruct the whole building. In recent years, however, European city councils have been clamping down on the non-commercial use of what they increasingly see as their commercial assets. Compared to the rest of Europe, Dublin hasn't had much history of squatting culture, and this property-obsessed city was always going to struggle with accommodating something as radical as Shomer Spree. The building that we were renting for the last six months just got shut down by the fire department. In Ireland, politically, the system isn't set up to encourage people you know, to start a project like Shomer Spree. It's, it's just set up to make it really boring and really bureaucratic and um, need to have a lot of money to just do anything at all in this city or this country. The worst cities always had the, the best subculture. I mean, in the 80s we played uh, like Switzerland, which was completely repressed the whole culture. But the squad scene and, and the, yeah. the people who did something was so strong. And that, that will always be the case. But you, I, I really believe that. Without access to an overground outlet, Ireland's underground communities will continue to use the houses and gardens and any other spaces available to us. We'll continue to do so and look to expand and develop our ideas, despite the general perception that this is something we'll soon grow out of.
DIY isn't something you do until you get real. I'm real now, and I was real then. And I'm 45. America, there's certainly this very deep psychological pressure to get real. Like, okay, we'll do your band thing now, but at some point you have to get real. The, the way, I think that's a bit the way most people are pushed a bit to do this thing of like always thinking of this kind of ultimate goal of being a successful, comfortable person in, by the time you're old. But that's so, it's. It's such a waste. If, you, if, you, if you're looking like that the whole time, you miss so much. Do you realize just when you are young, the things it takes so seriously mean nothing at all? Do you realize just when you are young, the stories you recall? Well, it's not something that, like, will it's just phase or something. Like, <laughs> it's definitely not a phase. Yeah, it's not. Um, I think personally, it'll be, it'll, it's something that I'll carry on throughout my life. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, keep my ideals of what DIY is and use them. Like, if it's something so positive in my life now, why give it up? You know? Why not go all the way? If you're going to have an epitaph, why not be like, well, they did it their way? That's going to be a good enough, that's, that's a hell of a good way to live. Improvising. I mean, we we had, had this hookup with the improvised music scene, but it, it's also always great to have this, this idea of improvising in your life that you don't uh, rely on definitions the whole time, but that, you, that you're always strong enough to improvise and to also take risk and to be stupid, and then but then they always get out of that and, and make something strong. In terms of DIY or any of those things, they're kind of like being open-minded, that kind of thing really is a lifelong exercise. It's actually a principle that can be applied to whatever you're doing. Oh, I think DIY is infinite. I mean, I think it has a lot to do with people wanting to, you know, live more locally. I think that's a big DIY thing. The whole green and sustainability, that relates to DIY and taking control of your own consumption and output and so forth. It's it's much bigger than just the arts and it's a kind of approach of it. Um, whether or not you kind of articulate that and kind of like, you know, try to set it aside as like a philosophy or something or just like a kind of way of doing things, I think it's like always there. So it's way beyond art. I think DIY is changing just about every corner of life. I believe you that night you're maybe slightly talking eyes, but I won't forget how you smiled when you were waving goodbye and I thought, Love what you're doing, just love it. Because at some point, if you don't reach a point that fits your idea of success, you will have at least spent your time doing something that you loved. So like this movie, it may never get made. It's okay. Because it seems like you've had a pretty incredible experience making it. And I had a pretty good time talking to you.